I bought the brand new PlayStation Portal, and in this video, we're gonna unbox it, test it out, tear it down, and see if it's any good. So right off the bat, the packaging is pretty standard, just looks like any other PlayStation packaging right now. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what's inside. All right, here it is. It came out in this nice gray box, which then, oh, oh, that's nice. Oh, okay, PlayStation, I see you. Then we got this cardboard piece that we pull off here. And dude, this packaging is so much nicer than the, than the, uh, the PlayStation 5 console itself. And here is the device, and oh my goodness, this thing is a monstrosity. Uh, let's see what else is in here. I think we have, yeah, just some, just a manual that I will never read in my entire life. And we also have a cable here. I guess that's a charging cable. Yep, so we have a USB-C to USB-C cable. There is no brick, so you have to provide your own brick or plug it into your PlayStation 5, I guess. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the monstrosity itself, and it's in this same kind of foam whatever packaging that the PlayStation uses for the consoles and <laughs> my goodness this is the goofiest thing I've ever seen but I actually I actually love it this is really cool and yeah it's straight up just a screen sandwiched in between a DualSense controller uh, the thumbsticks are a tad bit smaller than a regular DualSense but I think all the buttons feel about the same and look about the same then we have our screen here in the middle and it tells us that we need to turn it on and hold it for a few seconds I guess uh, just looking around the device, we have uh, volume buttons here on the top. We have our power button. I don't know what that button is right there. Maybe a link button? I'm not sure. And then flipping to the back. The aesthetic is pretty cool. It's got a, it is a thin screen, but it's got this kind of thick back back here. And then you have your charging port down there and also an auxiliary port for headphones. Now, that's something to note here is that it doesn't have Bluetooth support, so you can't just like use your AirPods or your, your just regular Bluetooth headphones. You have to use the special PlayStation Link headphones that are like $200, which is super lame, but we'll get into that later. Let's go ahead and reveal the screen here. Ah, it actually looks really nice right off the bat. And, oh, is that our, maybe we have our microphone down there. That's cool. Let's go ahead and turn it on and just see what, uh, what happens. And it's, Loading, all right. Okay, we got some nice startup music here. Okay, I see you. I, I wish there was a nice splash screen, but nothing special. We do, so we are turned on now. We clearly have our lights here on the sides, which is just a nice little aesthetic here. And we can go ahead and set up our network. So while this thing is updating, I wanna do a quick comparison of the PlayStation Portal and the PlayStation Portal from AliExpress. And you can see the size, <laughs> the box sizes here. Uh, they actually did a really nice job of copying them. Um, it's not that hard though because the PlayStation uses the same packaging for everything. So there's that. And yeah, comparing the two devices right next to each other, you can see the real portal is a monstrosity compared to the fake one. And if you want to see a full video on the fake one, I'll throw a link on the screen now. But the other comparison I want to do is the DualSense controller versus the portal. And you can see it's literally just a DualSense cut in half and split out to the side. And the one thing that's really noteworthy is the fact that the analog sticks on the DualSense are actually larger than the ones on the portal. And the ones on the portal, the analog stick is actually a little bit looser, not a big deal, just something to note here. And then of course on the portal you have all the same buttons and um, whatever. So let's like, wait for this thing to finish installing and see what it does. All right, so we're signed in. It says pair your device with any PS5 you've recently logged into. You can change which PS5 your device is paired with any time. So that's good because I have like <laughs> so many different PS5s I can log into. Uh, let's, let's see. All right, so it's telling me I can change settings by swiping this thing down like that. Oh, interesting. Okay, so here on the side we have a few different options. You can see which PS5 you're connected to. You can change, what was that? Okay, or not. Ooh, okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, now back over to the side, you can change the brightness of this thing. Wow, it gets really dark. You can also turn on airplane mode. What is the point of airplane mode on this thing? Like, it's, this thing's completely useless if you have airplane mode. Whatever, uh, you also have your PS Link headset button here. We have our settings. So nothing special here in the system settings. The main thing you can configure though is the rest mode. So we can change our rest mode to, let's do five minutes, sure, why not? And then coming over to display and brightness, you can also change the screen brightness here. You can change the brightness of the mute button. Oh, interesting. And then of course you can also change the brightness of the light bar, but all it is is just standard or off, okay. And then here on controller, you can change the vibration intensity to strong, medium, or weak. Keep that on strong. Also the trigger effect to strong. And so yeah, that seems to be about all you can do with your system settings. Let's go ahead and see if this thing is actually connected up to my PS5 yet. Oh, okay, that was nice. All right, so we're actually connected to my home PS5. So just for reference, I'm here in my studio, which is not my home. Uh, so I'm away from home right now. So basically I'm on one Wi-Fi network connecting to my home not Wi-Fi network, which is cool, but it does look like crap, unsurprisingly. Uh, we're here on Spider-Man, so let's just kind of see how this plays. Are you a PC gamer? Well, even if you're not, you should check out my other channel called Smoke and Silicon, where I unbox, test, and tear down interesting PCs. We've already made videos on a Mac Studio from Timu. Uh, we've torn down cheap laptops and a bunch of other stuff, so go check it out. Honestly, the lag is 
not too bad here so far. Main, the main issue is that it kind of looks like crap, which is, again, not too surprising because I'm away from home. But main, my, my internet connection here is good. My internet connection at home is good, so you'd think it'd be a, a little better than this. But, uh, well, of course, just a PS5 on my same network. There's definitely some noticeable lag, but yeah, not too bad. And I guess the interesting thing to note here is there's no way to change your uh, FPS or resolution target, so it just kind of does whatever it wants to. And uh, let me just kind of try to show this input lag here. So if I'm on the main screen, press down, like there's a little bit, it's not terrible. Uh, but again, let's go ahead and try a PS5 that's on my same network now. Yeah, it looks like to disconnect from this thing, you swipe from the side, click disconnect, and then yeah, you can put your PS5 in rest mode and disconnect. Okay, easy enough. So I have my other PS5 plugged in now, it's on the same network. We're gonna try that one out now. Now this PS5 is on Wi-Fi. I will try to plug it in via the LAN cable later just to see if that makes it, the experience a little bit better. All right guys, so here we are. And graphic wise, it still doesn't look great. I don't know, let's try to boot up Astro's Playroom. That's a, gate, a great game to test everything out with and see how that plays. Oh, interesting. So, okay, so when you do the touchpad, it gives you basically like a, you can do it on either side. Okay, that makes sense. So that you don't have to go like that. That's nice. So yeah, man, that does feel, it feels great. I will say, I feel like the vibration intensity is not quite as strong as it is on the DualSense, but it's very, if it is not as strong, it's very minor. Now let's test this game out and just see how it runs. So I just started downloading a Spider-Man 2 update and it completely trashed my performance on here. Like it's actually frozen. And there it goes again. It just disconnected uh, for a second time. And to be completely honest, I thought PlayStation would have sorted this out on their own device. Like it, it, it makes sense that you're using all your bandwidth to download a new update and you're not taking that bandwidth to play remote play. But I thought being a PlayStation product, they would have, you know, given you a bit of bandwidth for your PlayStation remote play, given you another chunk of bandwidth for your downloading your game. And you can do the same both at the same time. But I guess that's not the case, which is a bit disappointing. And now, yeah, it's working now, but it just looks like trash. And I will say that before I started downloading, it was it looked really good. Uh, it was dropping dropping frames here and there and the lag was like slightly noticeable but on a game like this it was just like not an issue at all. To say I'm impressed is, is not the right word. I'd say the feel and look of this thing is great like very impressed in that aspect but uh, just the whole remote play functionality I think is just uh, not any better than a Backbone or a Steam Deck or any other device you use to do remote play which is pretty disappointing because I thought you know having a PlayStation device itself they would have incorporated some technology that makes the lag less noticeable or not noticeable at all uh, now the other thing i do need to try is connecting this via a lan cable and see if that just eliminates all issues because that will just you know reduce our lag even more so i'm going to pause the download on spider-man 2 and we're going to connect this via a lan cable and see if that makes a difference here all right so i've played a few rounds of golf here on pga 2k23 and uh, graphic wise it looks great like uh, i haven't had any issues in the last like five or 10 minutes. Um, I haven't seen any frames drop, it looks really good. I will still say lag wise, input wise, it, it's still a little bit higher than I would hope for. Um, you can feel it like you're playing a timing based game or you're playing a quick reaction based game. You're gonna feel the lag like a little bit. It might be to the point where you can, it, it's, it's kind of on the line of, you either might be able to get over it pretty quickly and, and kind of just figure out how to adjust or it might be ever so slightly frustrating all the time, which is kind of that line you don't really want to be on with a remote play device. So like, I don't know, man, I really like this thing. You know, how it looks and how it feels in your hands, like 10 out of 10 for me, like this thing's great. It's just like playing it with a dual sense, pretty much. Uh, but the input lag, the, the the remote play experience is still just like a, I don't know, six or seven out of 10 for me. Of course, it is just disappointing seeing a device like this in your hands that can't natively play games or play cloud games. That's really the most disappointing part is you can't play cloud games. Um, and just the fact that this thing could have easily been like a, a Steam Deck competitor where you beef it up a little bit and you can play PS4 games on the go. But guys, let's go ahead and hop into the teardown. I'm curious how to even take this thing apart. I haven't seen a teardown online yet, so we're kind of flying blind here, but let's go ahead and turn the console off and just uh, see what we can do. All right, so it's been a while since I've taken apart a DualSense controller. Let's see if we can just start by pulling this faceplate piece off and if it works the same as a DualSense. Okay, yeah, that actually popped off really easily. Okay, yes, yeah, so it just keeps coming apart, okay. Individual piece on the side just pops off, right, like so. Now we can do the same one on this side. Yep, cool, so that piece is off as well. And we can kind of see into the internals a little bit here now. Uh, as soon as you take that piece off, you see some ribbon cables, you see some buttons on both sides, and that is an interesting setup for the analog sticks. And that's something I haven't mentioned yet, is the, the whole analog stick situation is pretty interesting here because uh, let's just think about the fact if you get stick shift on this thing, like how are you fixing it? Are you um, wait, hold on. Actually, the analog stick looks like it might be replaceable right off the bat. Hold on. I see two screws right there, two screws there. I guess actually the first issue is I can't quite get to that screw right there because this piece is blocking it. 
So let me try to remove some other screws first and see if we can get to there easily. Because what I'm getting at here is the fact that if you get stick drift on your analog sticks, like how do you fix that on a PlayStation Portal? Do you just buy an entirely new console? Like it's, you can't just swap out the controller um, as far as I know. But let's just keep tearing this thing down and see if we can find our answer there. So this screw over here actually has an S sticker on it, almost like, I don't know if it's like the warranty sticker kind of thing, I don't know. All right, yikes, so I was trying to take off the R1 and L1 triggers because those kind of come up on the DualSense and there's, that's just part of how you take it apart, but it, <laughs> they're both dislodged now and I can't figure out how to get it apart correctly, so uh, I hope I didn't just break this. All right, so I eventually, eventually got the uh, left L1 trigger to pop off and yeah, it looks like I might have bent the plastic a little bit maybe. Uh, so I kind of broke that piece. Uh, let's see if I can get this one off. Okay, finally got the right trigger off as well. Yeah, the plastic is definitely really bent there. I'm not sure if that's gonna click into place correctly or not anymore. Uh, but we do have two screws here. We have a screw down here and a screw down here we need to remove. So let's go ahead and do those. So it does appear I have all visible screws removed so far, uh, except for these two, which I can't get to yet. Um, but the good news is all the screws are the same size, which is good instead of having different size screws. But I'm not sure what I do next here. Let me go ahead and see if I can... Oh, actually, I think the entire back piece might just pop off now. Okay, yeah. So basically the entire back piece just pops off with some clips. I'm about halfway so far. It's a little... Uh, yeah, it's just uh, kind of sketchy trying to pop off this entire back piece. There it goes, maybe. Oh, yeah. Wow. There are so many clips on the back here. That's like... I don't know, 20 clips there. Uh, looks, uh, yeah, looks cool. Now here on the back of this device, okay, okay, so we've got one, two, three, four more screws. We've got, if obviously our wire is going to our vibration motors. Um, yeah, it doesn't reveal too much yet, but let's, uh, let's keep going. All right, so actually I just removed eight screws there, and one other thing to note is that I believe this right here is the antenna. It says ANT0, which would stand for antenna, and it sure does look like an antenna. Um, I also want to scan this QR code to see what pops up there. It just pulls up some kind of random model number and goes to absolutely nothing. All right, uh, let's see if anything will come loose now. I'm trying to get these pieces off here, but they're still not quite coming off, but I think I have them loose enough so that I can actually remove this screw right here. So let me, let me try that now. All right, that screw is loose. Let's see if this analog stick pops out of place. Oh, I think, uh, or no, it's not the analog stick. It's just the, wait, is it just the cover that pops out of place there? Oh, it is. No, that's, that's so lame. All right, let's see if I can get further down a little bit now. All right, guys, so it turns out the PlayStation Portal is not a very easy device to take apart. I've been kind of messing around with it like for the last 45 minutes. Now, actually, let me take a step back. The first good thing to note is that the analog stick is modular. I finally got down to that piece and it does come off with a couple of screws and it attaches via a ribbon cable. Now, it's I'll be honest, it's not easy to, rep well, actually, no, never mind. There is a ribbon cable that goes to that piece right there. So. You have to take apart a decent amount of stuff, but to get to the point where you take off the analog stick is not too difficult. So that is good. Like if you get, if you get stick drift, you can theoretically find another analog stick, swap it in, replace it, and you're good to go there. So that's the good thing. Uh, the bad thing though is I just broke my PlayStation portal. Uh, yeah, so if you guys take a look here, I don't know if you can see that ribbon cable right there, but it just uh, basically snapped in half. Uh, essentially, what I've been trying to do for the last 45 minutes is take, figure out where to, where to go from here. Like there's nothing obvious at this point. I've taken off all screws removed all accessible ribbon cables that are like, that I can see. And I got to the point where this thing was essentially like hanging off and was straddled by some ribbon, ribbon cables. And while I was twisting around and messing with it, this ribbon cable popped out. This one just snapped straight in half, which luckily is the mute button. So not quite the end of the world, but still not good. And I cannot figure out, I can't figure out how to go past here. Honestly, my thought at this point is we might have to take a heat gun to this thing to remove the screen. Man, I don't want to take a heat gun to this thing, but it's already, kind of broken anyway, so I guess let's do it. So actually, before I take heat to this thing, I wanna see if it still turns on. I haven't even tried it, so let's go ahead and hold this power button down. I would assume so. I mean, it's the battery is still hooked in. Uh, yeah, there it goes, okay. Let's just see what it lets us do now. <laughs> this feels so janky with that. I mean, obviously with this, this thing just hanging off the side. So I guess the nice thing is you can actually control most of this stuff with the touch screen. So I don't even need the, <laughs> the X button over here to select stuff. Let's go ahead and see. Yeah, okay, so I, I guess, so something I've done at some point has destroyed my Wi-Fi connection because I have two PS5s plugged in right now and it's immediately telling me it can't connect to the PS5. You know, I thought I might be able to still connect to my PS5 and then just scroll around at the left side of the, the controller and not use the right side, but apparently that's not the case here. But you can still load up to this this cool, nice animation here, but other than that, it uh, doesn't work anymore. We're gonna go ahead and push the whole heat gun experiment to tomorrow because I'm gonna do a video where I do a bunch of just various experiments on the PlayStation Portal. So. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.